I'm Jeff Walgamuth. I'm with Isis Farms. We farm up by Innisville. And uh, they called just to ask if we could give you, and they said it had to be brief, so I won't go into a lot of detail, but just to give you some experience that we've had, we've got uh, three of the solar panels uh, up right now. Um, but before I get started, I guess there's only a few reasons I think that we come to, that everyone come to a meeting like this one. I think a quarter of you had uh, at least a system in process. Uh, I think uh, the majority of the rest would probably be saying that you're seriously considering it. Uh, and I guess the only other reason is you thought maybe there's a free lunch after this thing or something like that. But uh, I'm a big proponent of when you spend the morning and you come to a meeting like this, that you leave with your questions answered and some practical uh, information to actually take it back to the farm and do something with it. So hopefully uh, don't let your questions go unanswered and, and make sure you ask us or whoever else here this morning so that you can get uh, whatever you want completed uh, done. Uh, I think it was probably about, I didn't know Ken was going to be here today either, but it was probably about six years ago on the green energy side, Ken and I had actually looked into the solar, or not the solar, I'm sorry, the wind uh, idea. We each had poultry barns that used a lot of uh, power, and we thought, well, wouldn't it be nice to have a wind turbine powering those? And that's back in the days when it was, uh, the power was all net metered. So you put the, uh, the, the uh, wind tower up and you net meter that uh, power back into it and roll your meter backwards. But back in that day, they were talking the contract was about 14 cents uh, a kilowatt hour compared to what uh, the 80 cents or the 64 cents that we're getting on solar now. Back in that, uh, at that time, the solar did not look nearly as attractive as it, as it does today. So we looked at that and there were a lot of hurdles to go as far as the hydro companies. Uh, they didn't have any idea how to hook on to their lines. I think the one estimate was about $80,000 just to have back feed uh, protection onto their line and that pretty well killed the whole uh, wind power for, for our farms, at least at that time. So uh, we looked at the solar and uh, I think you, Ron had asked about that. Do you have to go with a, a big supplier to do this or, or can you do some of it yourself? And I think we came at it that way. We thought, well, most of the people in this business right now are, they're, they're young companies, they're just getting into it and trying to figure it out as well. So maybe we can do something that, uh, we can figure out how to do some of this on our, on our own and save some money doing it at the same time. So that's how we, we started off into it. And we got into it, and you saw this morning, the big long list of, of process. And we weren't completely uh, afraid of the process, but there are a number of steps you have to do in the right order. And so we ended up going to a family friend who was an electrical engineer and hiring him on as uh, sort of a project manager for us. To try to go around and search out the best panels, search out the best tracking unit, and see if we could come up with our own type of a system. Uh, so as we move forward, uh, we ended up hooking up with Western Mechanical, who we've got some connections into Western Mechanical and Barry. And uh, through some conversations, uh, they figured out, or I'll say, we, I'll say we figured out, but I had nothing to do with the building of it, they designed uh, a tracker themselves, uh, designed right in Barry, and that's something that uh, looked good to us because it's a local company that we could work with. Uh, we had uh, some family connections in there and knew that they were going to be around for the, for the long term. And that's, that gave us a, a bigger comfort level. And I know everyone thinks their system is the best, but the tracking unit is a more compact unit with a, uh, two different slew gears that, that work in tandem. And uh, we were real happy with that outcome. So that was, uh, uh, we thought initially we were going to save a ton of money going that direction, doing it ourselves. I think in the end, we did save money. Uh, maybe not as much as we thought because we had to call in some other people to assist in, in, the, whole, uh, in the whole process to get our final project uh, how we wanted it to be. Uh, we, were, we were lucky enough to get under the, the guideline of the 80 cents. We uh, applied last February of 2010, February 1st. And so we got under the, the, the higher contract, which was nice. Uh, we're still uh, working through the, the whole hookup procedure. We've got two of our three actually producing power now. Our third one uh, was a bit delayed, and so we don't, we're still doing some inspection work on that one. But most of the delays on our case uh, were more self-inflicted in the design and the concept and everything else, not as much to do with, with the hydro or, or OPA at this point. I think I hear a lot of uh, stories about uh, Hydro One. Uh, I think the biggest advantage for us, and if anyone can move to Innisfil, we work with Innisfil Hydro, and the advantage there is uh, we, can, we just walk into their office if we have questions. And uh, uh, people at, at Innisfil Hydro have been very accommodating to us. 
Uh, we just sit across the desk and they walk us through the whole procedure and so I really have to give them uh, uh, yeah, a strong recommendation and high marks for, for the effort and their, their willingness to, uh, to work with us on this. Um, I would say that for everyone that has to make their own decision, that's what Jamie was saying, that not one system is the same as, as, as the next. So, you know, we went out, we put three, we're going to put three of them up. I think you need to look at your own situation and you definitely don't want to be betting the whole farm on it. We just thought that to diversify out and uh, we do a lot of crop work, we have uh, chickens as well. And this is just another way to expand the farm and diversify it out. And I think we can all see that the whole green energy thing is, is, is pushing forward pretty uh, quickly. And so we wanted to be a part of that uh, going forward as well. Uh, it can be a little bit unnerving, but I would recommend don't be afraid of the whole process. It's just, you just do one step at a time and you keep working through it and, and things typically end up working out in the end. So I think if you're sitting on the fence, if the numbers look right to you, just get started. And once you get started, uh, things seem to roll and, and fall in place. Um, I'm not going to keep going on too much longer. I think Ken has more details to, to let you know about. But uh, when you stand underneath one of these big uh, units, uh, we have one array that's a 10 kilowatt. And uh, it just, it's, it's funny to think that where is technology going to go? Uh, it reminds me of the big old satellite dishes that people had in their front yard, you know, and how we look at how funny that looks now. But I'm sure we're going to look back and look at our systems too and one of the same, but uh, hopefully technology does keep pushing. Uh, but you have to start somewhere and this is, this is uh, the technology that we have today and that's why we decided to go forward with it.